is see the Conservative Party rebuild with decent, good people and to be rid of some of the toxic behaviours that we have at the moment in the party and get back to being a party of core Conservative principles with people who put public service first and ambition second. And that is absolutely not the case at the moment, I'm afraid. In the city, the FTSE 100 has closed up 14 points at 74.83. The pound buys $1.25 and a euro 14. LBC weather, rain easing in the south, but blustery showers in the far north, mainly dry elsewhere, with an overnight low of minus one degree. From Global's newsroom, for LBC, I'm Tim Daly. This is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Ian Dale. Very good evening to you. It's four minutes past nine on LBC. Well, it's not often that we do two straight hours with different people as guests in the studio taking calls, but I I think it's really important that we've done that today, not just uh, with Nadine, but also in this hour we have Gideon Falter, Chief Executive of the Campaign Against Anti-Semitism. Now, why is that important? Well, I think for two reasons, in that I have been appalled, shocked, dismayed, by the number of Jewish people who've rung into LBC over the past five or six weeks telling me about the uh, terrible experiences they've had and the fact that they they genuinely fear going outside their front door. Now, no group in society should fear that. Whether you're Jewish, Christian, Muslim or whatever, nobody should feel that way in this country. And I think after all of the... Um, anti-Semitism stories that emerged over the past few years. We needn't go into all of those again, but um, we thought that had gone. And then, of course, the Hamas, Hamas attack in Israel happened on the 7th of October. And that seems to have generated a huge number of anti-Semitic incidents against totally innocent Jewish people, not just in this country, but in other countries uh, as well. So the campaign against anti-Semitism, which Gideon is chief executive of, has, has, I think, had to up its game, I suppose, in a sense. And they're organising a march on Sunday in London. It's the first of its kind. Um, They're calling it the National Solidarity March Against Anti-Semitism. So you certainly don't have to be Jewish to take part in it. But that's scheduled for this Sunday in London. So I'm going to talk to Gideon for a bit and then take in calls. We've got a huge number of calls coming in already. You've beaten Nadine Doris in the number of calls already, (laughs) Gideon. So well done on that. Um, I mean, when did your organisation first come into existence, first of all, and why? Well, it actually came into existence in 2014 during a war in Gaza. And what we saw was people in this country using that as an excuse to voice the most abhorrent forms of anti-Semitism. I mean, we had people walking down Oxford Street with a sign saying, Save Gaza, Hitler, you were right. And just in case... You weren't sure what the sign meant. He'd also written in the in the corner of it, Jews are the real terrorists. I mean, this is the sort of thing we were seeing. We were seeing people being beaten up. We were seeing uh, all sorts of institutional anti-Semitism as well. Uh, for example, the UK Jewish Film Festival was thrown out of the venue it had been using for 13 years because they'd failed to uh, sort of pass the purity test that had been set for them by the venue. They'd, be, they'd demanded that they renounce Israel and they'd say, well, why? It's a Jewish film festival. Why do we have to do anything? And we were just looking at this and as a Jewish community, I think so many of us just thought, what is going on? You know, this is one of the best countries in the world in which to live as a Jew. I mean, the country is world famous for values like tolerance and decency and fairness. And yet we have this absolute tsunami of hatred and we've got to do something about it. So uh, a bunch of us who'd never met before um, met over social media and formed campaign against anti-Semitism. And unfortunately, looking at the situation we're in today where things seem so much worse it's you know it's 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 very very dispiriting it's very very hard because it shows that there is still so much further to go and things you know the 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 people who spread hate are very very successful they're very good at it why do you think that 
Jewish people come in for this sort of these sort of attacks when people from other religions don't so much. Anti-Semitism is a really interesting form of racism in a, in a sense. It's a very, very resilient form of racism. And it does certain things a bit differently. So a lot of forms of racism, you know, they will punch down. They will say, oh, you know, these people are stupid or dirty or terrorist or violent or whatever it is. They'll, they'll, they'll attack whoever, whoever the victim of that racism is. But anti-Semitism does both both punching down it says that you know jews are you know um baby killers and all sorts of horrendous things but it also punches up it says that jews are all powerful and part of a conspiracy to you know control our media and our politics and all of these different things that they control the banks and so partly because of that it's very very resilient because it's a form of conspiracy theory and people who believe conspiracy theories, they, they, you know, you get them on the show the whole time, right? They, they believe that they know something. Oh, I had one last night who believes that the IDF killed all the people in Israel on the 7th of October. Right. And, you know, and, and this, is, this, is, this, this is the kind of, I mean, there was Piers Corbyn saying a very similar thing on a video um, on the streets of London that we took not long ago. And you, you get people who believe this crazy stuff. And they believe that they know something nobody else does. It's a very powerful way of spreading information, a conspiracy theory, or spreading disinformation. Social media has really sort of like given it a, 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 an injection. And what we're seeing, weirdly, is Nazi style propaganda being shared by Islamist extremists, Soviet style anti Semitic propaganda uh, being shared by people on the far left, and all of these different types of anti Semitism, which many of which have existed for decades in, or, or in even in some cases hundreds of years in different forms, are all melding together, sort of supercharged through social media. And when something like what's going on now happens, when you've got conflict between Israel and Hamas, people use that as an excuse to voice this. this prejudice this very resilient bigotry very resilient bigotry that they've that they've that they've been harboring all along what can be done about it i mean you're organizing a march but what what effect will that have i think the march will be will have a couple of effects um i think first of all when the october 7th atrocity happened i got text messages calls you know, WhatsApps, Facebooks, everything from all sorts of people who, some of whom I hadn't seen or spoken to, you know, I only sort of like casually knew, um, you know, from 10 years ago even, contacting me and just saying, hi, I've just seen what's happened. Jewish people must be going through a hell of a lot at the moment. And I don't really know what to say, but I just wanted to let you know that you're in my thoughts. And I know that for everybody who did that, there will be many others who are like me and in those situations often don't really know exactly what words to use and they will have wanted to say something but didn't. So the march is in one way, it's a way for people in this country who are sickened by the anti-Semitism that they're seeing and want to show Jewish people that they stand shoulder to shoulder with them. It's a way for them to very eloquently, without saying a word, show that solidarity. So that's one objective. Another objective is for the, for, for the Jewish community. You know, we've had now near enough seven weeks of really intense hatred being voiced. And Jews have felt that centre of town, for example, centre of London's a bit of a no-go zone at the, at the weekend now. It's dangerous. People are, you know, they're, 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 they're feeling edged out of society, edged out of town even. And this is a chance to walk with our allies, our people from who aren't Jewish, who stand with us, to walk through the centre of town again and say, no, this is not, this is not OK in this country, and we're, we're standing firm against it. Are you concerned about um, people trying to disrupt the march? Yeah, uh, and I think that's a sad thing. You know, if you're trying to march against anti-Semitism, that's all the message is. The fact that there has to be this massive policing operation, the fact that there is such concern about all sorts of different threats, people trying to disrupt things. That's, that's a very, very sad fact um, of, of the situation we're in today in Britain. It's, very, it's a very sad thing. 
Um, Billy on Twitter on a text says, uh, Ian, will you ever balance up and have a show about Islamophobia because of anger of terrorism? Um, I don't need to balance anything up because I've done that on several occasions in the past. We have done shows on anti-Semitism uh, as well. But given there is this march on Sunday, I thought it was absolutely right that we talked about it tonight, particularly given the number of calls that we've had over the last few weeks from Britain's Jewish community, who I think look to LBC for as, as a voice, or as their voice, to get their views out into the world. And um, it, it's, I have to say, it's been horrific listening sometimes. And you, th you, you do think to yourself, when you listen to people explaining why they fear going out of their house, why they, they again, this, this whole thing about, do I want to stay in Britain if, it, if, if there's all this anti-Semitism around, which I think a lot of people thought a few years ago um, was a bit odd. Um, but now it, it's reared its ugly head again. And I can understand if people don't feel safe. But then again, um, if you leave a... a what I think is of as a tolerant country like Britain, um, is it any better anywhere else? I mean, that's one of the big questions a lot of people are asking themselves. It, the, the, the people who are asking, do I have a future in Britain, are also kind of implicitly asking themselves a similar question, which is, where do I have a future if not here? And this is one of the best countries in which to live as a Jew. I've grown up here. I've lived here all my life. My parents did. My grandparents were all lucky enough to 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 find uh, find find a refuge here and build a life here. And I don't think that leaving is the answer, but it's a question a lot of people are asking themselves, and that's that's a sign of the times. Well, we're going to come to calls in a moment. I wasn't going to do that until half past nine, but there are so many coming in. Uh, we'll, we'll hand it over to the callers. It's quarter past nine. LBC. Wrapping presents. Before you try and find the end of the tape, again, take time to treat yourself at McDonald's. Introducing the big and cheesy, with or without bacon. 100% beef patty, delicious cheese sauce, crispy onions, even more cheese sauce, and a freshly toasted snowflake bun. Available until the 3rd of January. Serve from 11am, participating restaurants only, subject to availability. It's easy to find the perfect package holiday with EasyJet Holidays and Visit Egypt. Looking for a winter sunbreak on the Egyptian coast? Hmm, warm. With a fabulous choice of all-inclusive hotels. Getting warmer. And convenient departures from across the UK. Found it. Find your perfect package holiday in Egypt. Book now with only a £60 per person deposit, with flights, bags and hotel included. Search EasyJet Holidays. Holidays at all protected. T's and C's apply. I'm an outfit fine-tuner. Wide-smiled honeymooner. Bleak-faced commuter. I'm a feast whipper-upper. And a post-pint pop crooner. I'm a school-run done mother who's so bored of the parent group chat. I'm also visually impaired. Bet you didn't expect that. To see the person and not the sight loss, search RNIB. See differently. Have you heard about voter ID? You now need a photo ID to vote in elections. Check you've got an accepted form of photo ID. For example, a passport, a driving license or a freedom pass. And if you don't have one, you can apply online for a free voter authority certificate. Don't lose out. Make sure you're ready to vote and spread the word too. Visit registertovote.london to find out more. Remember, no vote, no voice. How do my daughter and I set boundaries on who can message her online? How do I talk with my son about healthy online behaviour? If you've got questions about how to keep your teenager safer online, Family Centre on Instagram has resources that can help. Family Centre is where you'll find supervision you can set up with your teenager and an education hub with advice from youth experts on how to have conversations about safety. Explore more of our family tools at instagram.com slash family tools. The magic of Christmas is sharing. That Lidl have won Supermarket of the Year at the Retail Industry Awards and which cheapest basket for October? That's award-winning Christmas dishes at prices that mean you'll be dining out on pigs in blankets all year. All the more reason to celebrate with us this Christmas. Now that's big on quality and always Lidl on price. Subject to availability, selected stores excludes NI. At your work Christmas do, not feeling the canapes. 
Why not get a pick-me-up with McDonald's limited edition chicken Big Mac with two deliciously crispy chicken patties, our iconic Big Mac sauce, and gherkins, or not? Only available until the 3rd of January. Serve from 11am, subject to availability. Leading Britain's conversation. Ian Dale, tweet at LBC. 18 minutes past nine, Maria says, will there be marches elsewhere in the country because London's quite hard to get to for many of us? It is hard to get to. Our rail network doesn't always make it easier. Um, We've got coaches that are coming from all over the place, um, from Cardiff, from Manchester, from Leeds, Nottingham, all all sorts of different places, I think, um, Brighton, uh, Bristol. So um, if if you'd like to get in touch... um, then please do, and we'll try and uh, we'll try and link up with uh, one of the coaches just from coming the Cotswolds. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> Any coaches from Chipping Norton? I actually know someone who's driving from the Cotswolds, but I'm not <laughs> sure if they're taking passengers. <laughs> I mean, it, it is it's quite something to do a march like this, isn't it? To organise it, because presumably, just like these other marches that have been taking place, you have to liaise with the Metropolitan Police. Yeah, have they been very helpful? Um, it has been challenging um, to organise this and the Metropolitan Police uh, and the CST, Community Security Trust, have done an awful lot of work to make sure this is safe. Um, I think there's going to be a big policing operation um, on Sunday to to look after us all. Um, we had to go through multiple iterations of the route to try and find a route which was well protected and that in itself is an eye-opener. We haven't organised a march before and just thinking of the number of different ways people are plotting to try to um, you know, harm the Jewish community and the incredible measures that have been taken um, to make it very, very safe. Um, and, and one thing to reassure people is that it's going to be a very safe march. Um, they've really done a fantastic job. So um, it is it is just an eye-opener when you go through the planning of these things to see how much goes into it. Right, let's go to your calls. Alicia is a first-time caller in Haringey. Hi, Alicia. Hi there. Thanks so much for having me. What would you like to say? First of all, thank you to Gideon for all the work that you're doing. It's um, impressive and important. Um, I suppose my question is just thinking about what you mentioned about London being almost a no-go zone for Jews at the weekends with the pro-Palestinian marches. I'm wondering whether there's anything that we can do to ask the UK to put an end to these what have become kind of hate marches and call for Jewish extermination marches. Whereas our um, anti-Semitic solidarity march on Sunday is likely to be a peaceful and inclusive march. But but to be fair, Alicia, I mean, to be fair, the organisers of the uh, Free Palestine marches, they they would say that they are meant to be peaceful and it's only a very small minority of people who carry these horrible banners. And yet, week after week, they are still doing this. So at what point do we say enough is enough and it's putting Jewish safety at risk? So even though it might be a small minority, it's a persistent and consistent minority. So I'm just wondering at what point do we, as a tolerant and moral uh, people of the UK, say this is no longer a safe place for all Londoners and all Britons? Gideon. Well, hi, Alicia, and thank you very much for your kind words. I I think one of the things that's been really difficult is that, you know, we're very proud to live in a democracy. You've got freedom of expression, you've got the freedom to protest, and that's important and it's got to be it's got to be upheld. But it's not you know, any freedom comes with obligations too. And Within the Public Order Act, which is the piece of law, uh, the piece of legislation that deals with the rights to protest, there are actually measures that police can take if protests start to become intimidatory, dangerous even. And we think that the threshold has well and truly been passed now for these things. You know, on Saturday, they're going to have the seventh week of uh, National March for Palestine, at which no doubt we will see, as we've seen in previous weeks, people dressing up 
in uh, Hamas uniforms, uh, people chanting um, in Arabic for our blood, uh, with our blood and our soul, we will sacrifice ourselves for you, Al-Aqsa, calls for jihad, calls for intifada to globalise the intifada. One of their chants is uh, globalise the intifada. Another one is uh, from from London to Gaza, we'll have an intifada. Of course, an intifada being a sort of uh, campaign of violence. So when you see those chance and those people dressed up in the way they are the glorification of terrorism the incitement week after week you think okay fine the the, the threshold for using section um section 12 of the public order act maybe even section 13 of the public order act has come into place and what those two things do section 12 allows the met to actually put conditions on the march and say okay you can you can you can march but You've got to do it along a certain route. You've got to do it within a certain time frame. You can't have your march blocking up the whole of London for the entire time. You've got to limit it to a certain number of people. And they can also use Section 13, which is what um, very similar to, for example, what France has done. France just said, look, we're not going to have these marches. We're banning them. And I would say at this point, I think... Anybody who wanted to march has probably marched. The point has been made. But we are now seeing on a weekly basis these marches, particularly at night, descend into violence. You know, fireworks being fired into the police, uh, officers being hospitalised, Jewish people finding that they are, you know, there was a horrifying video of somebody Jewish um, being, you know, being, being sort of like harried out. In fact, there was there was a, a, a demonstration outside Downing Street the other night where you could see people uh, shouting, "Sort of, there's a Zionist, get him." That's um, that's got to pass the threshold for a ban. And I think one of the big criticisms that we've had of the Met have been the way that they just have failed in their policing of these things, and and it has led to this climate in which Jewish Londoners, and I think many Londoners, Jewish or not feel that these are very intimidating and it has turned the centre of London into a no-go zone when they go on. Uh, Wayne says, how do we find the route if we want to join it later on? Unfortunately, part of the security preparations mean that we aren't able to publish the route. Um, Once we get going, we'll be uh, live tweeting and so Wayne will be able to see where we are. Uh, We're on uh, at anti-Semitism is our social media account. Um, but we'll be starting from the Royal Courts of Justice at one thirty, and um, well, I, in I the Strand. In the Strand, exactly. And um, I hope that uh, hope Wayne might be able to get there for then. Okay, uh, let's go to Keith, who's a first time caller in uh, Whetstone. Hi, Keith. Hi. Good evening to you. First of all, I have to say that that normally I'm not really in favour of demonstrations and marches. I think the main importance of this one is that the community stands up proud, stands up and shows that we're not afraid. Because the moment you show that you're afraid or act afraid, what you're doing is is putting yourself into the hands of the haters. That's the first thing. But I would say that we've got a very difficult job to campaign against anti-Semitism because it's, it's one of the oldest form of racism. It goes back <laughs> thousands of years. The modern day form of anti-Semitism is anti-Zionism. And I think the biggest problem is the media and i'm sorry ian i do include the lbc in that with some of the myths the untruths that are constantly peddled memes like occupation there is no occupation there are disputed territories yes there are no occupied territories was there any and all the nonsense with the settlements there were no settlements in the west bank between 1948 and 1967 was there war yes Jordan, who uh, who oversaw and illegally annexed the West Bank in that time, they attacked Israel. There were no Jewish settlements there. Gaza used to be part of the jurisdiction of Egypt. And in fact, the PLO started in... Well, come on, we, we can't have a history lesson here. What what you're basically saying is you, you want me to censor people who ring in saying things that you disagree with. Nothing to do with disagreeing. I'm stating fact. And when you peddle... And or, or come out with repeated memes. You see, you can get people like George Galloway and the likes repeating these lies, these untruths. I don't have George Galloway on my show, so don't accuse me no, of no, that. I know that, but when you repeat a lie often enough, it gets deemed as the truth. And unfortunately, 
You hear it on the BBC, LBC, Sky, these notions of occupation. There is no occupation. It's disputed territories, number one. There is this idea that Israel just suddenly came well, along from nowhere. Again, Keith... Uh, with respect, we're not here to debate the whole history of Israel. We're here to talk about anti-Semitism it. in this country. Sure. I'm not debating Israel. What I'm saying is, I, if you want to hear, if you want to help anti-Semitism, what you will not do is, if you like, add fuel to the fire of the latent anti-Semitism like there was in the Labour Party under Corbyn by fanning the flames. And the way well, I, I, I think flames, you'll find that th- this radio station, in v- virtually every presenter, held Jeremy Corbyn's feet to the fire on anti-Semitism. And I certainly did on my programme. I know James O'Brien did on his too, as did Sheila Fogarty, as did Nick Ferrari. I don't know what else you would like us to do. Well, I'll, I'll explain. Because when the, the media refer to, for example, territory such as the West Bank as occupied when it's actually legally not occupied, it is disputed territory, you are putting memes into the minds of the latent haters. I'm not putting any types. memes into, into people's minds. I'm saying to you that on this radio station, we don't do that. On this radio station, we have defended the Jewish community through the Corbyn years. On this radio station, virtually every presenter, certainly sort of that the I've listened to, has been extremely supportive of the Jewish position, the Israeli position. Well, listen, you'd have to speak to the people who feel support or don't support it. All I'm saying is... And I, well, I, basically, I, what you're saying you is that I can never do anything that will please you. That's what you're saying. No, 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 not at all, Ian. Not at all. I actually have a huge amount of respect for you, and I do like you, and I do find you one of the moderate voices. What I'm saying is there are memes, there are lies and untruths that are spouted by the media, even... Even in everyday speech, like occupation, like the idea that... All right. Well, you're, 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 you're kind of repeating yourself now, so I'm going to let you go. Gideon, do you want to respond? Yeah, I, I think, look, um, the, Keith, Keith kind of does come, come along with, a, a, you know, he, he's, he's introduced a lot of facts and figures and all that. The thing is that if somebody hates Jews... It's not because they're, you know, they're disputing the date of something or this particular term or that particular term. Anti-Semitism is is a form of racism. It's a hatred, and the people who who have that hatred, yes, there are certain things that are unhelpful. For example, when the BBC uh, reported that um, you know Israel had bombed a hospital, when in fact it turned out Palestinian Islamic Jihad had misfired one of its missiles into its own hospital, yeah, that did that did cause a reaction. I was in the office. It was about midnight. And I remember something got called into us, something came in, where somebody had posted on Facebook three posts in quick succession. One said, Jews have bombed this hospital. And he said, Jews, not Israelis or anything mm. else. Jews have bombed this hospital. The next was a post um, showing a, a couple of knives. And I'm not talking the kind you'd find in your kitchen. I'm talking about knives that are used for killing people. And the next was a post saying that... Um, there's not going to be a single living Jew on the streets of London and he's going to behead people. And so, yeah, people do get radicalised by um, by what they see and hear in the news. But it's also not the case that if you sit down rationally and explain to them you know, the history of everything, uh, that it's going to turn them. It, it's a form of racism. People often hate because they want to or because there's some kind of deeper psychological reason for it. So the media, yeah, there are sections of the media which do have an awful lot to answer for. And I've got to say, I was listening to that and I was thinking, God, Ian's not one of them. Um, <laughs> you know, that's, that's you know, the, the, the target, I'd, I'd say, you know, you, you can't go with such a broad brush and just say the whole of the media is the problem. There are sections which are the problem, but also well, you can't believe it's, you know, facts and figures that are going to win just, it. Just on that hospital um, incident that you were saying, I can remember that evening because it, it happened, I think, while we were on air. And I remember the absolute slagging off I got for saying, well, no, we can't actually assume this is Israel. We, we don't know the facts. We've got to wait until we know the facts. And uh, I, I actually am really proud of what we did that evening. Well, that's because, journalism. Because, well, because we didn't jump to conclusions. Yeah. Now, well, anyway, I could say a lot more about that, but possibly... I've no, but, that, but that's journalism. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to get in somebody's version of events and you're supposed to try yeah. and verify and, and it, figure and out what exactly happened. And it's exactly the same. If there is a terror attack, 
people nowadays just assume that it's an Islamist terror attack. And you can't do that. And I, I can remember there was one, not that, well, actually, it was some, some time ago now, where we sort of went into rolling news mode and there was something in the back of my head that said, like, I don't think this is what we think it is. And so I was very, very reluctant. And it, you cannot, particularly if you are the national broadcaster, OK, I will say it, you can't jump to conclusions if you're the national broadcaster. And that's, I'm afraid, what the BBC did on that night, and they should be eternally sh ashamed of themselves. It's 9.33, news headlines with Tim Daly. There have been violent clashes near the scene of an attack in Dublin where a five-year-old girl and a woman in her 30s were seriously injured earlier today. Trouble's been continuing this evening in the area around O'Connell Street. Rioters have looted a footlocker store and attacked police. Thirteen women and children being held hostage in Gaza will be the first to be released tomorrow when a temporary truce between Israel and Hamas begins. Palestinians are expected to be released from Israeli prisons in exchange. And a man's been arrested after a Jewish woman's car was set alight in North London. The Metropolitan Police says the 55-year-old was detained on Thursday. LBC weather, rain easing in the south, but blustery showers continuing in the far north, mainly dry elsewhere around the UK, with an overnight low of minus one degree. This is LBC. To avoid digital threats, turn on NordVPN. It will block web trackers, malicious websites and malware-ridden downloads. It will encrypt your digital data too. Grab the special Black Friday deal at nordvpn.com and enjoy safer internet daily. NordVPN. Cybersecurity built for every day. The magic of Christmas is sharing. That Lidl have won Supermarket of the Year at the Retail Industry Awards and which cheapest basket for October? That's award-winning Christmas dishes at prices that mean you'll be dining out on pigs in blankets all year. All the more reason to celebrate with us this Christmas. Now that's big on quality and always Lidl on price. Subject to availability, selected stores excludes NI. At Kia, we have an electric car perfect for you and your lifestyle. From fully electric SUVs built for adventure to family favourites full of smart technology or the ideal blend of style and versatility for the city. Choose your perfect car from our electric range, including our new seven-seater SUV, the Kia EV9, the award-winning crossover EV6, and car by a car of the year, the Nero EV. Take the lead. Drive electric. Search Drive Electric with Kia today. Kia. Movement that inspires. HGVs have four zones around them where their visibility is limited. At the front, back, and both sides, if you don't know where they are, you could be sitting in one without even realising. Know the zones, pass safely, and where possible, don't linger next to an HGV. Look out for each other. Search Know the Zones. National Highways. Wrapping presents. Before you try and find the end of the tape, again, take time to treat yourself at McDonald's. Introducing the Big and Cheesy, with or without bacon. 100% beef patty, delicious cheese sauce, crispy onions, even more cheese sauce, and a freshly toasted snowflake bun. Available until the 3rd of January. Serve from 11am, participating restaurants only. Subject to availability. Comfort season is here. We're getting comfy on the sofa, in comfy clothes, with comfy blankets, eating comfort food. And now you can comfortably buy a comfy new Skoda with a further £1,000 off. A new Skoda sitting comfortably on your drive. The Skoda Autumn event ends 30th of November, so don't get too comfy. Visit skoda.co.uk. Excludes Enyaq and SE Tech. Ordered by 30th November 23, registered by 31st March 24. Private retail customers only from participating retailers. T's and C's apply. Ian Dale on LBC. 9.37, Gideon Falter is here, Chief Executive of the Campaign Against Anti-Semitism. They're organising Britain's first national solidarity march against anti-Semitism for this Sunday. And of course, I imagine you're wanting, I mean, I've just had a text from a friend of mine saying, I'm Catholic, I'm going on the march. You, you don't just want Jewish people on the march. We, we want more than anything for people who aren't Jewish to be on the march because if if it's just down to Jews to fight anti-Semitism, just like if it's just down to black people, for example, to fight racism against them, then 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 we're lost. We 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 have to have the help of everybody who's decent in this country. And that's why what we're hoping is there's going to be a really strong showing and it looks like well, there is going to actually, be. Actually, just on this, Bushra in Ikenham has phoned in. Um, you want to ask about this, Bushra, don't you? Would you be welcome on the march? 
Hi, Gideon. So, um, and, and Ian, of course. So, um, so yes, I'm. Um, that that was my question. Would I be welcome on the march? I hadn't heard about the march until I um, just turned on LBC just now. And um, my background is I'm a British Muslim, and you know, of course, anti-Semitism is uh, abhorrent, and um, there's been an increase in Islamophobia in this conflict. And I really think, as the British community, we need to stand together against hate. So since this has started, um, my my father, who's elderly, and he goes to his um, local mosque for prayers every day, his mosque has been vandalised twice, and it's it's really upsetting. And I really, you know, I just, I think we all need to stand together. And last week, um, I sought out um, a protest organised by a Jew- Jewish group for peace um, in Israel, and Palestine and they're called Namod and I was I was really welcome there and it was just I left feeling like there is hope and if we can all see the humanity and and come together as people um, I mean obviously we you know my views on Netanyahu's government and what he's doing at the moment are are you know are, are quite strong but um that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about the British community standing together. Yeah, we, we absolutely are. And first of all, I'm really sorry to hear about your father's mosque being vandalised. And I think that's one of, you know, what you say is very important. We all need to stand together. People who hate Jews don't, they often don't just hate Jews. People who hate Muslims often don't just hate Muslims. And we do have to stand together. And there, there, there is a real principle here which is that, you know, there, there is humanity versus everybody else. And people who are against racism versus everybody else, you can't be against some forms and not others. You'd be so welcome. You'd be so welcome. We really need the help of everybody who wants to stand with the Jewish community at a time like this against the anti-Semitism that, that we're facing. So I um, hope you will come. Uh, it's uh, 1.30 at the Royal Courts of Justice. Hope to see you there. Bushra, thank you. Let's go to Mandy in Bayswater. Hi, Mandy. Hi, Ian. Go ahead. Hi, Gideon. Hi. um, I am from England. I was born here from a very proud British family. My father was Lord Mayor of Birmingham. He was a major in the British Army. My mother was a magistrate. I very happily live in Israel now. I'm over in England at the moment because of my husband's work. We had to travel over. I was not looking forward in any shape or form of actually coming to England now because of all the anti-Semitism I've heard about here. Yes, we've got rockets and we're at war. We've had the worst atrocities happen in my lifetime in Israel. But what we hear on the news and from people and on closed social media is not just alarming, it's disgusting that this is allowed to happen. Jews all over London and the rest of the UK are taking their mezuzahs down from doors. Most Jewish houses, not everyone, not everyone has to do it, but most Jewish houses put on their door on the outside a mezuzah. Now, people know that that means that there are Jews inside it. People are frightened at the moment to have them on their doors. People are frightened to go into the city of London. People are frightened to go on the underground. I am very, very lucky that I don't live here. I don't need to be frightened about these things. But one of the things that happened to me that really, really alarmed me on how Jewish people are held to different accounts here in the UK than anywhere, um, than any other nationality was so alarming. I went to an event at the Houses of Parliament. It wasn't a big event. It was in one of the committee rooms. And as part of the um, the meeting, they'd got um, families from that had been affected from October the 7th. I use the word effective. It's not a very good word. Some people had had families that were brutally murdered and other people had had families that had been kidnapped. There was a mother 
that was trying to get in. She got a picture on her T-shirt of her son that had been kidnapped by Hamas. And it's not um, hearsay. She'd seen videos of him inside Gaza. She was told on trying to enter into the House of Parliament, which is supposed to be the beacon of democracy and fair say, not just for England. This is like started from glo- global, you know, such respect for how it's run. But she was not allowed to go into the Houses of Parliament wearing her T-shirt of her kidnapped son because she was told it was political. Now, in which parallel universe can it be political for a mother to wear the T-shirt with a picture of her kidnapped son? Where is the humanity? Where is the fairness? Is this anti-Semitism? Okay, Gideon, have you heard about that incident? Yeah, I have heard about this. Um, First of all, you know, what Mandy says is very true, as in a lot of Israelis... They've literally got rockets exploding in the sky above their heads. They've just had this absolutely horrendous massacre. There are people who are still right now in the tunnels in Gaza. And yet they're taking the time to send messages to me and other British Jews saying, are you okay over there? It seems quite dangerous. Um, And that is kind of the perception because there is a huge rise in anti-Semitism at the moment. I think the Met Police released some statistics uh, recently saying there's been a 1,350% increase in anti-Semitic attacks here in the UK versus a year ago. So there's this sort of real surge in anti-Semitism. And what we're seeing in some of these incidents does seem to be a double standard. I mean, if you look at a couple of weeks ago, a week and a half ago, You had Parliament literally surrounded by this huge mob of people, amongst whom there were people who were, um, you know, making genocidal chants. And I actually saw some of them myself um, and saying things which are definitely anti-Semitic. They didn't have, you know, in order to to, to demonstrate in Parliament Square, for example, you've got to have a permit from the Greater London Authority, all that sort of thing. I'm not sure they had all that in place. But... You then have a mother who is trying to go into Parliament, presumed he to plead the case for British politicians to try to do something to help get her son out of the clutches of Hamas terrorists, and the authorities in Parliament saying, no, you can't do that. And there is this real perception, I think, amongst a lot of people, um, not just Jewish people, but I think anybody looking at it, that when it comes to one side of this when it comes to anti-semites on our streets breaking our laws the police are incredibly lenient and they explain away all sorts of things before they even happen in some cases and then you've got other cases where you've got this mother who is probably desperate at the moment and trying to raise awareness about her son being told to take off a T-shirt with his face on. Why? Presumably because she's the easy target. And that is a really disturbing thing. Well, it is. Mandy, thank you very much for phoning in. It's 9.46. Coming up at 10 on LBC, Nick Abbott. Net migration into the UK hit a record high last year. How much of a problem is migration and why can't the government get it under control? Nick Abbott on LBC. This road trip is by Helen and George. The choosing the perfect country pub for a break. Her. The is that a kestrel or a falcon? Him. The discussion on which road to take. Them. Soundtrack picked by her. But going the extra mile to find them great car insurance. That was all down to Mitesh from Howden. Our people make it possible. The new name for A-Plan. Search Howden Car Insurance and meet our team. Authorised and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority. Travelling this Christmas? Well, whether you're an angel looking for some leg and wing room, a wise man who knows a great value fare when he sees one, or a jolly chap needing some luggage space, (laughs) National Express is the perfect way to get to all your festive fun. So don't let train trouble derail your winter plans. Our comfortable coaches run throughout the season, including many on Christmas Day. 
Book your seat now at nationalexpress.com. The one. Express yourself. Let's go, let's go, 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 go. get in. Move it. What's wrong with the car? Flat battery. What? You absolute... It's OK, lads. I'm with the AA. Oh, lovely. With more expert patrols in more places, we'll get you back on the road in no time. Join the UK's best breakdown service from 7 50 a month. The AA, always ahead. New customers only, T's and C's apply. Verify best and patrol numbers at the aa.com slash best. It's easy to find the perfect package holiday with EasyJet Holidays and Visit Egypt. Looking for a winter sunbreak on the Egyptian coast? Hmm, warm. With a fabulous choice of all-inclusive hotels. Getting warmer. And convenient departures from across the UK. Found it. Find your perfect package holiday in Egypt. Book now with only a £60 per person deposit, with flights, bags and hotel included. Search EasyJet Holidays. Holidays at all protected. T's and C's apply. The landline is changing into something much better. A home phone service running on broadband, helping us stay better connected. At BT, we call it Digital Voice. Your number will stay the same and you won't pay more than today. For most, it means plugging your phone into your BT broadband router. If you don't have one, we've got you covered. The switch will be gradual, so we'll be in touch when it's your turn. Rest assured, we'll support you every step of the way. Find out more at bt.com slash digital voice. Leading Britain's conversation. Ian Dale. Tweet at LBC. It's 9.49. Gideon Falter is here, Chief Executive of the Campaign Against Anti-Semitism. Uh, Nicola is a first-time call in Edgware. Hi, Nicola. Hi. Hi, Ian. Hi, Gideon. Good evening. Um, so I wanted to say a few things. Just, um, I am Jewish. I'm British. Um, my mother was a refugee from Nazi Germany, and I was being incredibly proud of being in a country which opened its arms to my mother, her family. Um, she lost many, many of the members of her family in the, in the Holocaust. Um, but what's been going on over the last few weeks, actually, sort of, I think like a lot of my friends, a lot of the community I'm involved with, you know, we do look now and we think this rise in anti-Semitism, you know, where is it going to end? And I think it's very interesting because almost like the blinkers have come off. It's like there's been this latent anti-Semitism going on for many, many years. And then all of a sudden, it's like someone's uh, lit a, a spark to, you know, like a fire lighter. And all of a sudden, people are, you know, it, it's all coming out. And it just seems, you know, to a lot of people, incredibly hypocritical. Because, yes, what's going on in Gaza, the loss of life, you know, anybody would say it's a, it's a terrible thing that's happened. But where were all the demonstrations, you know, when the Uyghurs were being murdered? Where was the demonstrations against Syria when 250,000 Muslims were killed by them? It just seems now that it's a, it's a great opportunity for anyone who has any anti-Semitic thoughts in their head. You know, they can now voice them. And they're sort of, they're being allowed to voice them under this, this banner of, you know, free Gaza, free Palestine. And the sad thing is, is that, the people there are living under oppression. So, you know, when it comes back to the Jewish people in Britain, also what's it got to do with us? It, it's very terrifying. My daughter lives in Israel. My sister lives in Israel. Most of my family live in Israel. And they do. They regularly say, you know, we feel safer here than you are. My daughter was just with me a few days ago. Um, and she said she couldn't wait to get back, couldn't wait to get back to Israel, even though she is going many nights a week into her bomb shelter because there's still bombs raining over Tel Aviv, which is where she lives. But she still feels safer there. So it's, it's just an incredibly sad state of affairs. And I totally support you know, this March, I'll be going on it. Um, in fact, my husband and I are regular donors to the CAA. Uh, we've got a m monthly that. Thank you. <laughs> that's okay. You do amazing work. And I think it's really important. And really, that's sort of what I wanted to say. Just it's, it's, not, it's not a good time to be Jewish okay. in, in the UK. Okay, Nicola, thank you very much indeed. Um, I'm going to move on to Daniela in Maida Vale. Daniela, hi. Hello. Good evening. Um, I, first of all, wanted to say to Bushra, uh, thank you for calling and standing for humanity. And thank you, Gideon Falter, for all, that you, all, for all that you do. We think you're amazing. And thank you for being a voice for people who don't have a voice. So one of the concerns or questions actually I have is um, what are your 
views on Mayor Sadiq Khan and how he is battling anti-Semitism. Um, look, thank you very much, Daniela. I think there's a real problem in London. There is a real, real problem in London. Um, the way that the Met Police has been dealing with things, I think everybody in the Jewish community feels that there's just there's just inaction. We're seeing mass criminality at these marches uh, week after week, and we're seeing the Met Police, you know, sort of take the the, the lightest possible approach to it. You know, if you, if 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 60 people from Just Stop Oil run out into the road and block the way or run into a train station and try to impede people, they're immediately dealt with. Are they? Yeah. They, they, they get arrested. They, they arrest them in the, in, in the dozens. Me. Well, th- since they passed this new bit of legislation, they didn't used to, but um, since they passed this new bit of legislation, Section 7 of the Public Order Act of this year, they they have been and they've been very proud about it. They keep tweet the Met Police tweet things like, uh, you know, sixty people just jumped out into the road in Parliament Square. We responded in four minutes. Sixty arrests. Road reopened. It's not perfect. <laughs> they are still causing a lot of problems all over the place. But what we also see is um, these demonstrators, for example, going and deliberately, um, you know, sort of doing mass sit-ins in train stations. Um, we see them uh, blocking the roads. We see, for example, out, we, we've got a billboard van that drives around London. They run out into the road in front of it and block it from proceeding. And the police do nothing about it. We also see people doing far worse than blocking roads. We see people literally dressing up as terrorists and saying that, um, you know, that what happened on October the 7th is a great inspiration to them. We see people saying they hope more Jews die. But there has been a, a real, a really inadequate police response. And ultimately, back to sort of Daniela's question, Sadiq Khan is essentially the police and crime commissioner for London. There's all over the UK you've got police and crime commissioners, but because of the special structure in London, that's Sadiq Khan. And when we see so little action taken by the Met Police, what you would expect to see, what you'd expect to see is the mayor of London saying, hang on a second, we've got to, we've got to up our game. We've got to protect our Jewish community. People are feeling afraid. We've got to do more. I haven't seen that kind of thing from Sadiq Khan. What, I haven't do seen th- that kind of action. Why do you think he isn't reacting in that way? I think it's a very good question for Sadiq Khan. I'd love to know the answer. I would love to know the answer You've to presumably that. got a theory, though. I, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know why he has done so little. Um, but it's not just him who, you know, it, the, the, the police operationally, he's, he's got sort of oversight of the police, but operationally it's under the control of Sir Mark Rowley. And we've had this sort of bizarre situation where these marches go off, officers are, you know, put in, 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 in harm's way, frontline officers working hard to protect Londoners, put in harm's way, British Jews terrified by what they see, and Mark Rowley going and doing the rounds on news channels, saying that these were peaceful marches and everything broadly went off okay. And it, it, you, you, you know, it makes me do a double take, and it makes me wonder what on earth is going on because that, you know, that's not leadership. Well, I'm going to play devil's advocate here because if there are 300,000 people on a march and there are 50 of them carrying banners which are clearly anti-Semitic, uh, and another 50 who do things which you wouldn't approve of. I mean, that's 100 people out of 300,000. So, I'm, I mean, I'm not excusing no. what they're doing, but no, all, no, no, all I'm I, saying I, is I, that I you, take... ca- you can't smear everyone with the, the, the sort of anti-Semitism brush, can you? I, I get the point, but... I would I would say two things. First of all, obviously those are you know those are they, those are hypothetical numbers. They're made up numbers, right? Just for the sake mm. of argument. Um, the first thing is I don't think that it's such a small minority within those marches that hold those views and engage in that kind of behaviour. We see masses of people chanting you know this sort of genocidal chant from the river to the sea. We see masses of people engage. You know we've we've seen crowds of people, for example, chanting in Arabic. Um, Kaiba Kaiba chant, which basically um, calls on Jews to remember this medieval battle in which Jews were 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 slaughtered, and warning Jews that the army of Muhammad is returning. And that kind of thing happening in a march, it's definitely more than a hundred people. It's 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 a it's a significant number, but for the people who aren't doing that, 
you've got to set you've got to think to yourself hang on a minute week after week you are marching and on the first week you see people doing this and on the second week you see people doing this and the third and the fourth and the fifth at what point do you as a supposedly decent person start to take issue with some of the people that you're marching with or just decide you're not going to go on those marches anymore and from the police's point of view Look, these marches have been going on now for... The, the, this weekend will be seven weeks of these marches every single Saturday. Um, and they are unpoliceable. They are enormous. And there is criminality at these things every single time. And they should be using the powers that they've got under the Public Order Act to limit the size of them so they do become policeable or just ban them like Paris has done. As Stalin Hyde Park says, Ian, it takes one person to carry an anti-Semitic banner but a whole crowd around them to make it possible to do so. That's she quite a so profound text right. to end with, isn't it? Gideon, thank you very much. I wish you well on the march. I hope it all goes off peacefully. It's the National Solidarity March Against Anti-Semitism. It's taking place this Sunday, 1.30. More details on the campaign against anti-Semitism social media. Well, Thank you for all of your calls and messages this evening and throughout the week. I'll be back with you on Monday from 7. Coming up at 1 on LBC, it's Clive Bull. But right now, in for Ben Kentish, here's Nick Abbott. Thanks, Ian. A packed programme tonight will ask whether there is anything the Conservatives can do before the next election to close the gap with Labour. The social contract between parents, pupils and schools is broken, according to the outgoing head of the school's watchdog. What went wrong? We'll check in with our US correspondent for the latest from there and hear about the hostage swap and truce in Gaza. But first, more people came to Britain to live than ever before last year, despite the government promising otherwise. Why are they unable to meet their commitments on migration? And does it really matter whether they do or not? And more coming up with me, Nick Abbott, after the new news at 10 on LBC. On your radio, on Global Player, and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation, this is LBC. From Global's newsroom at 10 o'clock, rioting has broken out in Dublin city centre this evening after a suspected stabbing. Three children and a woman were injured earlier in the day. Tonight, the head of the Irish Garda has blamed the latest violence on what he's called a complete lunatic faction, driven by far-right ideology. Killian Sherlock, a journalist for the Press Association in Ireland, has been talking to LBC 